Now, please, Babs, just stop it, will you? I'm tired of this. Oh, for gosh sakes, Mother. Stop harping on the same subject. Sit down and eat. You're going to be late for school. But, Mother, the coat's only $33. Oh, and it's simply gorgeous. And my old one's practically in tatters. No, it's not that bad. I'm afraid you're going to have to make it do for a while longer because we can't afford a new one. But, Mother, it's only $33. I I'm going to ask Daddy. No, you're not. You're not going to start pestering your father at breakfast. Oh, Mother. And remember, you promised him you'd never talk about money at mealtime. I know. So now whenever I bring up the subject of money, he starts eating. Mom's right, Dad. You better lay off the Pop. Let's keep him in a good mood. Well, that's very considerate of you, Junior. Sure, then I can hit him for a buck. You'll do no such thing. Mom! I your mush. I gotta take Marilyn Morris to the basketball game. Oh, you and that goofy little kid. I need a coat. Well, I need a girl as much as you need a coat. I mean... Really, we all need things, but you children don't seem to realize that on your father's wages, we can't get them all at once. Mom, I'm warning you. If Marilyn has to keep paying for me on dates, your son is gonna get the reputation as a... a gigolo. That'll be enough out of you. Gosh, what a life. You know yourself, Mother, a girl has to make a nice appearance. You always do, dear. Ah, good morning, my happy tribe. Good morning, Good morning, dear. Good morning, offspring. Good morning, Pop. Good morning, Dad. Ah, this is what I like to see. My own little family gathered around the breakfast table without a care in the world. Daddy, dear. No. Pop? No. Well, gosh, you don't even know what I was going to ask you. I know, I know. With you kids, I'm psychopathic. You want money, right? Yeah, but only a dollar. Junior? You must think I made of money. Didn't I give you a dollar yesterday? Yeah, but you made me give you four quarters for it. Okay, we know you're smart in arithmetic. Don't show off. Stop annoying your father, Junior. Yes, leave him alone. Poor Daddy hasn't even had his orange juice. Here, Daddy, drink mine. Gee, Babs, you're getting to be a real thoughtful little girl. Daddy, dear, I need a new coat awfully bad. Here's your orange juice, Pam. Oh, Daddy. Here you are, dear. I mean, listen, kids. I used to be a kid myself, and things were tough with us. So I know how it is. I know you need things. I know your mother needs things. I don't need a thing I can't do without. Yes, you do, Peg. You need a new hat. Gee, children, you should see your mother's old hat. The roses on it are wilted. Well, I'm not going to get a new one, see? Of course not, but we can fertilize the old one. <laughs> I mean, we just got to make our old things do. Until we can save some dough. Things are tough. But, Daddy, you're still working. And Mr. Stevenson still pays you every week. Sure, but a riveter's pay envelope ain't worth what it used to be. It's that inflation. Pop, what is inflation anyway? Well, it's... Junior, do you mean to sit there and tell me that you don't know what inflation is? <laughs> I bet your sister knows. Go ahead, Babs. Tell Junior what inflation is. Well... I'm not too clear on it. Just what is inflation? <laughs> How do you like that, Peg? Can you beat that? Our kids don't know what inflation is. Suppose you explain it to them, dear. Well, it's very simple. Take the price of, uh, of steak. Steak? Now, the price of steak is going up and up and up. And soon, we won't be able to afford to have steak. All we'll be able to afford is uh, potatoes and spaghetti. So we have potatoes and spaghetti seven days a week until one morning I get up and try to put on my pants and I can't button them. Now, that's inflation. <laughs> it's no joking, matter. Now, let me finish my breakfast in peace. Riley, get up, will you? What's the matter oh, now, Peg? Gee, those overalls, all full of grease again. See what you did? You're always getting that awful grease all over the house. Peg, I'll thank you to remember that this grease feeds our family. Oh, I know, dear, but it's almost impossible to get your clothes clean. Gee, I wish you had a job where you didn't have to wear those clothes. Oh, I see. You're ashamed of my job. No, I didn't say that. Don't apologize, Peg. You're perfectly right. I don't blame you for being unsatisfied. I'm not dissatisfied. Ah, oh, yes, you are, Peg. And it's all my fault. After working all these years, I should have gotten someplace by now if I had any brains. Oh, Pop, you got brains. No, I ain't. I'm a dope. But I'm smart enough to know it. Oh, Daddy, don't say that. I can't figure it out. I work as hard as I possibly can. Sometimes even harder. And I still can't give my family the things they need. Oh, we're perfectly happy, Daddy. 
Now, stop that talk, Riley. We get along all right. Ah, uh, you're always saying that, Peg, just to make me feel good. You haven't finished your breakfast yet. I'm not hungry. Goodbye. You didn't kiss me, dear. Oh. Well, I'll get you twice tonight. <laughs> Here I am, married all these years. <laughs> and I've been working hard and scrimping and saving. And what have I got to show for it? Nothing. I still owe Peg the two dollars she paid out for the marriage license. I'm a failure. Riley, your wife has given you an interior complex. Why, whenever my wife opens her yap, you know what I tell her? I say, if you don't like the status quo, you can ipso facto. You <laughs> a responsibility to your wife. After all, you asked her to marry you. Who asked her? It happened at a picnic. She was chasing five guys, and I ran the slowest. <laughs> well, my wife deserves the kind of things, and I can't give them to her. Jesus, the big boss. <laughs> Hello there, Riley. Hello, Mr. Stevenson. Hiya, Mr. Stevenson. Nice to see you, Riley. Yeah. How are you, uh... uh <clears throat> I don't even remember my name. I got him on my list. Ah, what a life. I wouldn't blame my wife if she walked out on me tomorrow. If it wasn't for the kids, I'd walk out with her. Well, cheer up. Maybe one of these days that big shot Mr. Stevenson will promote you. Ah, ah, ah. A chance. I've been here ten years and I'm no place. But you're always so palsy wowsy with him. Why, whenever he passes you, he slaps you on the back. Yeah, but lately I've been noticing the slaps are getting lower and lower. I think that Stevenson would show us some gratitude after all the years we've been here. Not on your life. Here we are, working ourselves to exhaustion, while he's up there in his fancy office counting the dollars. What a weasel. What a non-great. Attention, riveting department. Riley coming on the telephone. Me? Riley, pick up the phone and the machine job. Mr. Stevenson calling Riley. Yo, it's the boss, Mr. Stevenson. Do you think he heard me? Nah, he's got big ears all right, but he ain't equipped with radar. Come on, let's answer your phone. Maybe you want to me. So what? How do you live on unemployment insurance? You won't eat, but you live. Hello? Mr. Stevenson? This is Riley. What? I can't hear you, Mr. Stevenson. There's a lot of noise. What's that? A job for me? On a desk? What's that? Assistant manager? Mr. Stevenson, you mean? Oh, thank you, Mr. Stevenson. Yes, sir. I'll be there. 9 a.m. Oh, you'll never regret this, Mr. Stevenson. Oh, thank you, boss. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, darling. What's your telephone for? What goes? Where's the floor? I've got to sit down. Stevenson, he just gave me a jet phone. A golf jet. A test jet. Well, if you don't betray, what are you raving about? Mr. Stevenson, he's just promoted me. He just made me the new assistant manager. Assistant manager, you. You! It's a cat's apostrophe. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yo, oh, thanks, Millie. I guess you can go now. Uh, oh, by the way, did they deliver the desk I ordered for the new assistant manager? Yes, sir. It's in the vacant office. Fine. I talked to a man in the riveting department named uh, Riley. He'll be here in the morning. Uh, you show him into the office and put him to work polishing that desk. I want it ready for the new assistant manager when he gets here Friday. Yes, sir. What time is it? What time is it? What time is it, Babs? Hurry up with that tie, Peg. I don't want to be late for work the first day. Stop fidgeting. There, it's tied. Oh, and it looks beautiful with your new suit. Oh, you look wonderful, Daddy. The starch collar's killing me. <laughs> I can't get my Adam's apple up and down. Oh, Daddy, it's a must. All big executives wear white starch collars. Yeah, it's a good thing I had this left over from the wedding, Peg. You gotta get me another one of these. <laughs> It'll be dirty inside of a week. Huh. Junior, you finish polishing my shoes? Okay. All through. How do they look? Great. Holy smoke! During the excitement, I put my left shoe on my right foot. Fuck, <laughs> you got your legs crossed. <laughs> well, I gotta get going. Yeah, get your coat on. Junior, can you I get me that taxi yet? I gotta have a taxi. I called it. It'll be here in a minute. Dad, a taxi, Daddy, there. all the way to the plant? No, just to the bus. Well, goodbye, Dumplin. Gee, Peg, your lips are getting checked. Oh. There's, the, there's the cab out of the way. All right, goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Where's my lunch pail? Oh, Daddy, executives don't carry lunch pails. Oh, okay, then I won't eat. Yeah, well, good luck. Good, good luck, luck, Daddy. Pa. It sure was, wasn't it? 
Oh, oh isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Hello, miss. Is the uh, chief in? Did you have an appointment with Mr. C.J. Stevenson? Did I have an appointment? <laughs> you tell C.J. that the new assistant manager is here. Oh, you're the new assistant. <laughs> well, we hadn't expected you so soon. Well, I thought I'd get here a little early. I don't want to miss Mr. Stevenson. You know, the early bird catches the worm. <laughs> I'll tell him you're here. Well, this plant's really going to get rolling now. Mr. Stevenson, he's here. Who's here? The new assistant manager. What? Why, Mr. Roy isn't due here until tomorrow. Oh, and that desk is a mess. Where is that deadhead Riley? Riley? The Riveter. Well, I don't know. Shall I call Riveting? It's almost 9 o'clock now. Who does he think he is, an executive? Yeah, find out if he's punched in. I'll go and show Leroy's office. Yes, sir. Well, good morning, Leroy. Oh, Riley, it's you. Yep, it's me. That secretary of mine thought you were... <laughs> Is she dumb? <laughs> yeah, she looks dumb. <laughs> well, let's go, Riley. I'll show you the office. After you, Chief. Well, here it is. There's the desk. Now you better get to work. Gosh, what a beautiful office. Gee, Mr. Stevenson, Carl, I want to thank you for this opportunity. Don't thank me. I couldn't have found a better man for the job. You won't regret it, Carl. I'll work hard for you. You'll always be able to point to me as a shining example. Shining example? That's good. <laughs> well, it's all yours. Rise and shine. Oh, uh, Carl, uh, Mr. Stevenson, I guess uh, being assistant manager carries a pretty hefty salary with it. Well, naturally. Hmm. Uh, 10,000? 8,000? 6,000? 5,000? 4,000? I won't have to take a cut, will I? No. Stop horsing around and get busy and polish that desk. Gee, Mr. Stevenson, you can't expect an assistant manager to polish a desk. No, I expect you to do it. And I want it finished before Leroy, my new assistant manager, gets here tomorrow. Leroy. Oh, gee, I, I thought that he meant me. Taking the kids. What do I tell them? What a revolting development this is. Yeah, it's me. Oh, Daddy, dear. Come on, sit down. Mother, Daddy's home. Hiya, Big Shot. How'd it go? How's the new assistant manager? I don't know. I haven't seen him yet. Oh, oh, I'm fine. Hello, darling. How are you, tired, dear? Hello, Peg. How'd it go, Pop? Did you put over any big deal? Did you fire anybody? Did you dictate any letters? Have you got a secretary? What's she like? Did Mr. Stevenson... Oh, now, children, give your father a chance. He must be dead tired. Remember, he's been thinking hard all day. Yeah, I can hardly lift my arm. Your arm? I'm picking up telephones. Oh. Well, now, tell us all about it. How does it feel to be an executive? I'm glad you brought up that subject, Peg. I got something I, I got to tell you. Yes, dear. Now, listen carefully. You see... Well, let's put it another way. Suppose there was somebody who thought they was somebody they wasn't. And then that somebody found out that they wasn't somebody they wasn't, but they was somebody that they always was. What do you think? I don't get it. Stop talking in circles, Riley. What are you trying to say? Well, Peg, you were surprised when they made me the assistant manager, wasn't you? Oh, naturally. Everybody was surprised. I've been on the phone all day spreading the news. You shouldn't have done it, Peg. You shouldn't have done it. I told that snooty Helene Bidwell, and you know what she had the nerve to say, Daddy? You wouldn't hold a job more than three days. Maybe she's right. Daddy, what are you saying? What's wrong, Riley? You're not yourself. Believe me, I wish I wasn't. Oh, now something's bothering you, dear. Come on, tell Mama. Well, Peg, I was thinking, maybe I ought to quit being a high-class assistant manager and go back to Riverton. We got enough money and... What? Gee, Pop. One day a man will work and you're having a nervous breakdown. Junior. Well, I was thinking of quitting. Huh? Uh, just for your sake. 
For our sakes, what do you mean? Well, Peg, you know what happens when a guy gets into the big dough. He, he becomes a big shot and he gets to be a snob and then he gets to be repulsive. And I don't want to be any more repulsive than I am right now. Oh, Roddy, you stop all this silly talk. But, Peg, I'm only thinking of you and the kids. Of course you're only thinking of us, you darling. You just about made us the happiest family in the whole world. Now, come on, let's have supper, huh? Uh, I'm not ready for dinner yet, Peg. I'm going out and take a walk. I'm going to blow out my brains with some fresh air. Yeah, I get all the dirty work. Riley, are you finished polishing that desk? Not yet, Millie, not yet. Gee, you're certainly a mess. You have more polish on you than you have on the desk. <laughs> you better hurry it up and don't make a career out of it. Miss Hoity Toity. Always criticizing. When she thought I was the assistant manager, she treated me with respect. <laughs> now that she knows who I am, she takes advantage of my stupidity. Uh, what is there to being an assistant manager anyway? All you do is hire and fire people. Collect big dough and take long lunch hours. <laughs> then when the phone rings, you act like a big shot. Hello, Riley speaking. This is the front gate. Your wife and kids are on the way up to see you. Listen, front gate, will you stop bothering me with those petty details or I'll slip you a pink slip. <laughs> bothering a busy... Oh, my wife, my family, big bad Junior. Well, Riley, Mr. Stevens wants to know if you're sitting. Millie, Millie, my family's on the way up. You gotta help me, please. Well, what do you want me to do? Help me take off my pants. What? I mean my overalls. <laughs> you see, you see, Millie, I didn't tell my family. That is, I did tell my family that I was the assistant oh, I manager. Well, but I haven't told them yet that I'm not. Please don't give no, me away. Give me a break, them. Millie. Hold on, wait back. Here, hurry up. Let's hold on. Give me away, Millie, no, please. I'm telling you. Here he is, Mom. Hiya, Pop. Hello, Dad. Hello, dear. We thought we'd pay you a little surprise visit. Fine. What a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Uh, I was just finishing up some work with my secretary, How Miss you Millie. <laughs> well, I guess that will be all, Miss Millie, uh, except I want to send out those circular letters, so send me in some round paper. <laughs> Gee, Daddy, you have a beautiful office. Oh, it's beautiful, Don, and you're beautiful, too. <laughs> hey, Pop, how come your name isn't on the door yet? Oh, uh... I, they ran out of paint. Oh. Uh, here, we brought you a few little gifts. Yeah, look. Business cards printed with your name. Chester A. Riley, Sr., assistant manager. Thanks, Junior. And this is a pen and pencil death set with your initials. Good luck, Daddy. Thanks, Pam. And here's a picture of me and the children to keep on your desk. <laughs> Gee, Peg, you shouldn't have done it. Believe me, you shouldn't have done it. Oh, wait till I unwrap it here. Here, Junior. Put the paper in the wastebasket. Here, look. <laughs> Pretty? Hey, look! These overalls, Pop, I found them in your wastebasket. Oh, Riley, those look like... Uh, they're not mine. <laughs> they're Millie's. They belong... I mean, they're Gillis's. Gillis's. Gillis's, yeah. Fine thing, I let Gillis come in and as a favor, I let him polish my desk and he leaves his dirty overalls around. <laughs> I'm gonna ram these down his throat. Gosh, Pop's acting awful funny. He certainly is. And you know, it's funny about those overalls. I could have sworn... Hey, Riley, the foreman... Oh, Mr. Gillis. <laughs> Mrs. Riley, and the kids. What are you doing here? Oh, we're just visiting Riley. Hey, Mr. Gillis, Pop's looking for you and I'm looking for him. The foreman wants to know when to be through polishing his desk. He wants him back in the ribbon in the popping. Polishing the desk? Yeah, for Leroy, the new assistant manager. Gee, some guys get all the breaks. I got him on my list, too. Well, tell him to speed it up. So long, folks. Mom, I don't get it. If Pop's the assistant manager... Oh, don't be such a dope, Junior. Daddy isn't the assistant manager. He isn't? No, I'm afraid he isn't, children. Well, why did he say... How come he told us that... Something must have gone wrong. No wonder he's been acting so strange lately. Poor thing's been eating his heart out. Now, don't you say a word to him. Not a word. All right, Mother. Shh. Well, I guess I told that Gillis off. <laughs> you did? Yes, sir. I bet his ears are burning. You know, Peg, after all, friendship is friendship. But he's got to realize that I'm the assistant manager. That's right, you dear. You sure are, Pop. Yeah, well, now I guess you all better go because uh, I have a lot of work to do. You have? Yeah, I got a big meeting with Mr. Stevenson. Uh, it's a big stock deal. 
You see, I have to figure out the fiscal fiduciary here. And uh, I made a startling discovery. I found out that the common stock was too common and that the preferred stock, nobody preferred. So I'm going to have Marley, a... why don't you quit this job? What? Now, that's gratitude after me slaving all these years trying to get to the top. Did you say quit? Yes, dear. Now, don't be angry with me. I know how much this job means to you and all, only... Well, I don't know, Peg. This is a pretty important job. I know, dear, but you'll be happier in your old job. You're asking me a lot, Peg. I know, dear, but I don't really want to be rich. You know what happens to people when they get money. They will become snobs. Yeah, but we'd be democratic snobs. Do it for my sake. For your sake, Peg? And for the sake of the children. Come on, Pop, quit. Please. Yes, Daddy, give it up. You're asking me? Oh, we're asking you. You're begging me? Yes, we're begging you. You're pleading with me. Oh, we're pleading, we're pleading yes, with Daddy. you. Yes, Daddy. Okay. I quit. But you forced me into it. <laughs> Oh, Riley, thank you. Gee, Dumple. Now I'm a failure again. I'm the happiest man in the world. <laughs>